Okay, so these are the video comments for uh, the Module 1B quant exercise. So we've moved out of the straight-up review, and now we're getting into uh, material that is uh, probably new for everyone, the idea of consumer and producer surplus. So in going through this uh, material, what I want to focus on, or what I will focus on, is how are we going to be using this information? The quant exercises are, generally speaking, very straightforward, kind of right or wrong uh, kinds of answers. But in going through this exercise, I just want to remind you of, you know, what are you, what are you trying to get out of this? So, or what do you have to make sure that you try and remember and how we might use it before? So first of all, um, looking at things like the uh, problems two and three, describe how you identify the consumer surplus. So that there's a distinction between describe or on a graph show. That's just a straight up, can you describe you know, via the picture or how you might see this uh, via picture what consumer surplus is, and then later on with producer surplus. So again, that case, I just want you to be able to, I mean, in, in extending this, I give you a picture, uh, uh, marginal benefit, marginal cost, uh, or supply and demand curves, and can you show me the consumer surplus at a particular price, okay? Probably more importantly is the concept, what does that, uh, what does the marginal benefit curve represent? So it's a little more of this idea of an explanation. Um, yes, we have this idea of the marginal willingness to pay, um, Probably what comes after that, the idea of representation, representing the maximum value the consumer is willing to pay for a good. So again, you're going to incorporate this kind of uh, language into an explanation. This is kind of, this demonstrates a clear understanding of what the curve is. I, I guess my general concern with students is that they tend to just like identify a title, use a title, and a lot of what the explain assessments are going to address is do you understand what these things are? So that means you have to broaden your, uh, your capacity to discuss these things and explain these things. So anyway, um, so uh, next part is the producer surplus. We'll move to the next slide. And again, as I mentioned before, uh, if we look at six and seven, it's the idea of you know, describe or identify. So this is a very uh, visual thing. If I give you a graph of supply and demand, can you identify the producer surplus at a given price or a given quantity? So again, very mechanical. Uh, the key difference is the representation. This is getting into, you know, what is the marginal cost telling you? Uh, so I say the supply curve represents the cost to industry, the value of the additional resources required of providing one more unit of good. Again, as I said before, this is the language you're, you're really going to have to incorporate in an explain assessment. So again, in reviewing these quant exercises and providing you these videos, I'm trying to get you to focus on you know, not really simply did I get the question right or wrong, but what is it that McDougall is getting us to start practicing, emphasizing. And again, I think the, uh, these videos will help help us, you and me, kind of get, get you to that point. So let's uh, move a little further down this um, slide. All right, so uh, the next item I want you to kind of focus on in this, uh, in this exercise is, uh, let's see, so if we're looking at problems 10 through 12. Again, so we're, act, we're starting to look at these, these ideas of being outside of the equilibrium. So generally speaking, marginal benefit equals marginal cost is where we want to be. Students have no, no problems saying, oh yeah, that's marginal benefit equals marginal cost is the optimal. But again, for these key explain assessments, we're, I'm trying to get you to move towards understanding the why. Why is marginal benefit equals marginal cost where we want to be? So again, so you can look at 10, 11, and 12 as these steps uh, towards explaining why we want to be at marginal benefit and marginal uh, equals marginal cost. And one of the key ways to do that is to start explaining 
what's the problem when we are not at that equilibrium, when marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost or marginal benefit is less than marginal cost. So these are kind of the, the initial building blocks uh, of what's going on. In fact, this is getting at this idea of dead weight loss. Essentially, when you're not in equilibrium, if your marginal benefit is greater or less than marginal cost, we've foregone some benefits. We could do better in terms of efficient allocation of resources. And so this is kind of getting you started. We will go over this in class, but I just want you to start looking at these basic answers to get you to start thinking about uh, why is it a problem when marginal benefit is not equal to marginal cost. And then in class, as we discuss it, you have a better grasp of what's going on and why, you know, why should we care? Okay, so let's move on to the next page. Okay, so in this, uh, again, as I mentioned before, um, what we want to do is start, uh, start getting at this idea of what happens when we are outside of that equilibrium. So we have marginal benefit, marginal cost. At this level of output here, marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost. That's not a good thing. So we have to start thinking about why is that not a good thing? Are we hurting ourselves or is it just that we could do better? Again, we have another situation at another quantity. Uh, marginal benefit is less than marginal cost. So again, you want to start thinking about moving towards this capacity to explain why this is a problem. Again, if marginal benefit is less than marginal cost, just by our definition or our rule, we know we can do better, but why aren't we doing as well as possible when we're at this point? And how do we explain why it makes sense to move back to that equilibrium? Okay, so um, generally speaking, these problems, 13 and 14 on this page, are really talking about the dead weight loss. So dead weight loss is occurring when we're not in equilibrium. So when marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost, this is our dead weight loss. When marginal benefit is less than marginal cost, this is our dead weight loss. So the question is, you know, starting to develop this uh, ability to explain, you know, why is it not good? How is it represented by the dead weight loss, etc. So again, I'm just wanting you to keep this in mind. This is, you know, our job next is to extend this uh, straight, you know, is it right or is it wrong, and then move towards that why, okay? So there's a, uh, we'll move to the last page. And again, uh, if we look at uh, 15 and 16, it's kind of reinforcing what we've done uh, already. So we have the condition marginal benefit is less than marginal cost. Um, if you refer back to the, to the graph, what are the implications? Well, now we have this idea that society has wasted resources. So that's kind of, we've got that statement, you're connecting it to the situation where marginal benefit is less than marginal cost, now you have to start working on why is that so? What are the, what's the nature of the definitions, interpretations, the graph that explain why that situation represents a loss of resources? And then the other situation, marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost, um, we're not wasting resources, but we're essentially getting to this idea of we can do better, okay? We're foregoing uh, benefits by not uh, consuming and producing more. So again, this is simply a step towards explaining why we can do better, why equilibrium, marginal benefit equals marginal cost, is the best place to be. So again, I just want to keep reinforcing when we look at these quant exercises, they're just the first initial basic building blocks of moving us towards explaining why things make sense, okay?